Hi, welcome to Bespoke Year, I'm CP and in this video I'll be reviewing The Perla Del Mar by JC Newman. As per usual, we'll be conducting this cigar review using the Bespoke Year Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can download at home. Uh, just head into the description, you'll see a link where you can see a guide on how to use it, as well as a downloadable PDF that you can print off. Similarly, we have the final written review in the description as well, where you can see the final PDF of this particular cigar, as well as all the scores that it received for every consideration. Additionally, the cigars were stored in the Bodo acrylic humidor that you see behind me. This was to ensure they were properly acclimated and standardized for every review. We used 69% of Bovida packs and regularly monitored them with a Bovida butler. Paul and I are very, very fond of the Perla Del Mar by JC Newman. It's a pleasant, mild blend uh, that is very friendly for beginners, it's easy to smoke, and it's a great choice for the morning if you like milder blends. It was released in 2012 and supposedly inspired by a 19th century Cuban band that Eric Newman had discovered. This particular Vitola I have in my hand is the uh, 6x60 Très Grand, or TG, it's a Toro. But I also have here a lovely little smoke, which is a great one if you're sh limited on time and just want to enjoy it with a coffee. This is a 3 and 3 quarter by, I believe, 54 or 58. It is uh, called the Perla P, or Petit. These cigars are assembled at the J.C. Newman Penza factory, which stands for Puros de Esteli Nicaragua S.A. The method is an accordion bunching style, which is Hecho Mano, of course, made by hand. The wrapper is an Ecuadorian Connecticut broadleaf. The binder, I'm afraid I don't have much information on that, I just have Nicaragua. And the filler is composed of four different leaves, all from Nicaragua. We have a Pueblo Nuevo, La Arena, Condega, and Jalapa. We'll now dive into the look and feel, and I'll take out this uh, unsmoked Toro that I have here. So first of all, you'll notice that it is a very smooth cigar. There are no discernible uh, soft spots, although there may be a couple, they're very well hidden, so the rolling consistency looks nice and smooth. It's a little bit soft in the spring if you give it a good pinch, uh, which is not too surprising given that it's a box press. If you do them too tightly, they tend to break. The hue has a lovely khaki colour, and the sheen is somewhat oily, but it has a little bit of a matte effect. Meanwhile, the veins are very, very refined. You won't see many on the cigar, maybe a couple, but not too, uh, it's not too rustic whatsoever. Meanwhile, the aromas on the foot are very pleasant. It has a caramelised bouquet consisting of a musky labdanum, a hint of caramel, of course, and a sweet, boozy raisin finish. Meanwhile, the pre-light, when you cut the cigar, you'll find it has an ideal draw. The flavours are quite rich as well, giving you a lovely precursor into the full cigar experience with hints of tonka bean, which is quite, uh, quite sweet, quite gourmand, with a hint of yeasty brioche and a spicy cinnamon hint. As for the palate, uh, smoking the cigar, so I smoke quite a number of Perla Del Mars and uh, Paul has too, so hopefully he agrees with my assessment here in this review. Overall, the uh, Perla Del Mar for me personally is reminiscent of a barbecue along the Mediterranean coast. It has a lovely sea breeze and caramelized and lightly toasted woody uh, profile in general. It opens up with a creamy butterscotch note, which quickly subsides to reveal some toasted pine and grilled almond. This has hints of citrus, although I could not identify any particular citrus notes at this time. Once I transitioned into the second third, it became a little bit more aromatic, with hints of toasted thyme, which uh, was particularly prevalent on the retro hail. It had a hint of pepperiness, but there were no discernible notes of that. There was a sandalwood uh, accord there as well, as well as a softened vanilla note, which extended the caramelized essence from the first third. Once into the final third, you'll experience perhaps some tonka bean, which I noted in the pre-light earlier. This is quite verbose and uh, somewhat uh, gourmand, which uh, pairs well with a spicy nutmeg note, which is still quite mild and pleasant on the tongue, as well as a cedarwood finish. Although this is an easy to smoke cigar, it does have a complex bouquet, a variety of different notes that you can identify and spend time savouring. The mouthfeel is very smooth, quite velvety, with a hint of creaminess in the texture, 
and the astringence, so the dryness of the cigar, I found it to cause a little bit of salivation. That's not too bad. I quite enjoy a, sal a cigar that sa makes me salivate rather than one that is too dry. It's particularly good to pair with something, not to quench your thirst, but to help produce more saliva to help you taste the cigar. In terms of simu stimulation, it seemed a little bit focused towards the front, on the, uh, on the sides as well as the uh, center front. The, the stimulation didn't really extend to the back. Meanwhile, the life cycle of the cigar, as you, uh, as I mentioned, there was an evolution in flavors. It did have a good sense of consistency, but it did tell you this, a, a story nonetheless. And meanwhile, the finish, somewhat lingering, not too present on the palate after the cigar was finished, um, but you did have a little essence of it left. And finally, the residual scent in the room is very pleasant. It has a toasted cedarwood note, which again, reminds me of kind of a Mediterranean coast uh, setting. With regards to the uh, burn and combustion of the cigar, the draw remains consistent throughout the whole experience, a nice ideal uh, tightness to it. The temperature remains cool, although you may start to experience some heat towards the nub. The angle, the burn angle, this is untouched. So very slight waviness, but overall straight razor sharp burn with a strong backbone. I managed to get ash for the majority of the cigar, I'd say half of the cigar, until it plopped off into my ashtray. And finally, the overall experience of the cigar. Uh, I love the band. It's uh, got a lovely vintage vibe to it. It's quite uh, stunning with this gold, this gold scrolling, uh, very eye-catching. The only downside is that you'll have to be very careful when removing the band because the Connecticut wrapper is very delicate, so there's a chance of tearing it. Otherwise, the box, I don't have one, so I'm afraid I can't comment on that. However, I have looked at a couple of photos. It does have a very uh, regal appearance to it. Quite, uh, quite prestigious. However, this is an affordable cigar, which leads me to the value for money. The, um, the Très Grand, the uh, Toro, can be picked up for $6.60 a single. Uh, that obviously goes down when you buy a box of 24. Very affordable cigar for the experience that it provides. Meanwhile, the uh, Perle Petit, that can be found for less than $5. Occasionally, you'll find these on sale as well, so these prices will drop. Uh, but the Petit comes in a 28 cigar box. And finally, the occasion for this cigar, given its price point, is extremely versatile. This can be enjoyed at a formal occasion. You can take this to a very well-to-do cigar lounge and not feel out of place, even though it is quite an affordable blend. You can also enjoy it at a wedding. It would fit right in there, especially that it's very beginner-friendly. Otherwise, it's a great cigar to enjoy uh, in the morning with your coffee or with friends around a barbecue. Very versatile indeed. Lots of ways to use this and enjoy it. Finally, we'll look at the pairings. This is not scored. We feature this in the bottom right-hand corner of every cigar review. This is just to give you a couple of ideas of how you can enjoy the cigar. Well, first of all, I did mention a barbecue earlier. I think this would be great with certain types of white char-grilled meat. Veal is a possible choice, but I would certainly go with perhaps char-grilled pork. Pork ribs would be a great option. Alternatively, pair it with milk chocolate. Most times we say dark chocolate, but since this is a very creamy cigar, you might extend those flavors with a creamy milk chocolate. And finally, candied peanuts, or as the French call them, chouchou. These are caramelized roasted peanuts. Very, very sweet. Got a lovely caramelized flavor to them, and that would pair well with the cigar's overall properties. Otherwise, in terms of drinks, I would consider a mild aged rum. When I say mild, I mean something that hasn't been overly flavored. For example, uh, a uh, Flor de Cana, uh, the 18, it has a very complex, but not overpowering bouquet, which would pair nicely with the cigar. If you prefer whiskey, perhaps consider a Kentucky bourbon. Alternatively, I would personally go for a Lowland single malt. For example, a Glen Kinchy 12 has a very floral and mild flavor that would go well with the cigar. And if you're a coffee drinker, as this is a great cigar to have with your morning coffee, rather than go for an espresso, consider a cafe au lait or a latte. That would be very pleasant with the cigar indeed, because you have the creaminess and they would play in, uh, they would play and work together to produce a harmony and new flavors. I hope you enjoyed this video. That's all from me today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe. And until then, why don't you head to bespokeunit.com, see all the other men's lifestyle content that we do, or take a look across the channel. I'm sure you'll find something that you'll enjoy. Until next time, take care.